Hi, it's Ron Williams again, Natural Bodybuilder of the Decade. Also inducted into the Natural Bodybuilders Hall of Fame, seven time Mr. Universe, seven time Mr. World, and seven time Mr. Olympia. We had a question from Tom, which was a very, very good question. Uh, Tom, this is for you. You said that you are trying to build your chest and it's building, the outside of your chest is seen to be building, but the inside is not really building the way you would like to see it built. And if I could recommend some exercises, that would be very helpful. We have the push-up. It's time effective, you don't have to go to a gym, you don't have to do all these other things to, to do a push-up, you can just get right down where you are and do a push-up. There's a right way and a wrong way to do a push-up. The best way to do your push-ups is to make sure that you acquire a power position where the elbow and the forearm reach a 90 degree angle and you're forcing the chest open. Is when we normally do push-ups, if you don't think about it and you just do a push-up, you'll automatically put your hands a little closer than you should because you probably can do more push-ups close in. I have more stability, I can control this. But notice my shoulders go forward and not open. But I can do more push-ups in this position. Now if I get my hands open wider, that's gonna force me to open my chest. Oh, and then push up oh, from this position. But as you can see, the closer my hands are together, the more I can get a peak contraction. Watch this, start here. Ooh, I'm missing all of that area of building my chest and I'm only building the outside. Tom, if you're doing bench presses, if you're doing push-ups, that's part of the reason why you're not building the inner part of your chest because ooh, you're not getting a peak contraction. You may be getting the maximum contraction out of the exercises you're doing, but not a peak contraction. Form is everything. It'll protect you from injury and it'll better build your chest. But your question is how to build the inside. Even though I designed the Iron Chest Master, in the beginning of my career, my chest was my weakest body part and my back was my best body part. In order for me to be the best I could be, I had to get my chest to, um, to uh, equal the back that I had. And it took a lot of work, it took a lot of years, and it took a lot of research and study on how to build the chest. And I realized at that point that it was that arc movement that was so utterly important, and it actually took me years to develop my chest the way it was supposed to. I've got a shortcut for you. I developed a piece of equipment that's called the Iron Chest Master. Do I want you to purchase the Iron Chest Master? Absolutely. Why? It's going to get you the results you're really looking for. But outside of the Iron Chest Master, I'm going to show you some other exercises that you could do um, to get the best you could get with other pieces of equipment. Okay, this exercise is called a cable crossover, but I want you to notice with the cable cross crossover, all of the resistance is coming from behind me. There's no real lateral resistance. That's very important in building the mid, the middle of your chest. You need resistance ooh, coming in from lateral. So this, all of the resistance is coming from behind me, but I'm also using that arc movement, which is also incredibly important. A good stretch, and then the first movement is shoulders going forward, ah, finishing with the arms. Ah. Right there, stretch, look at the shoulders going back, not just the arms going back, but the shoulders, and I'm opening my chest. I'm gonna make sure my shoulders aren't forward like this, but let the shoulders go back and stretch the chest, and then bring the shoulders forward, uh, squeeze. Uh, that's the middle of the chest. But importantly, you want lateral resistance coming from the side. That's what we have in the Iron Chest Master. Let me show you another movement. Before we start this movement, I want to tell you one of the problems we have with a fly is the fly involves the bicep. So as I'm pushing forward, when my hands are 
further away from my body, the more the bicep has to be involved. So I'm not gonna be able to use the same amount of weight. And I have to be careful with those shoulders. Again, I can do the machine like this. But the important thing is open the chest and open the shoulders as wide as you possibly can and ooh, squeeze from there. Boom! At the top of that repetition. So, important again, we need lateral resistance coming directly from the side, from this side and this side coming in. That's very important to build the center of the chest. This will build your chest, but it's not gonna give you that maximum peak contraction that you need unless you have oh, lateral resistance coming in, which is very important. Now a bench press, on the other hand, you're limited to that straight bar. As you're coming down with the bench press, some professionals will tell you to stop right before you touch the chest. Otherwise, it'll damage your shoulders. And I appreciate what they're saying, but the reason they're saying what they're saying is because many, many, many people, as they're coming down, they're letting their shoulders go forward, and then they're having to heave the weight up, which causes damage to that shoulder. With a lot of the activities that we participate in, a lot of sports we play, they won't allow you to throw or pitch uh, over a certain amount of pitches in, a, in, 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 in baseball because we're constantly going against that shoulder joint and it'll damage it. When you're lifting a tremendous amount of weight, you're damaging that shoulder by bringing it forward. But if you open the chest and engage that muscle in the arc motion, that that, sh that that chest was created in, and you consider the joint, and you squeeze all the way through, it's not gonna damage the shoulder. If you're coming down like this, please stop here. But if you're willing to, ooh, open the chest, you can take it all the way down, get a full range of motion. The thing with the bench press that bothers me most is you can't manipulate the bench press or that bar to your body. You have to manipulate your body, and the body has to adapt to that straight bar. Um, with the dumbbells, you can manipulate and adapt those dumbbells to the body. So the bench press is second to the dumbbells, but the Iron Chest Master is above both. And I'll, I'll show you why. Dumbbells are much better than the, than the bench press but you can't use as much weight um, with the dumbbells as you will with the bench press. Partially because that bench press, that bar, gives you the ability to combine both sides of your body together and it gives a great deal of stability. You're more unstable, but also with the dumbbells, but also with the dumbbells, you control them and adapt them to the body. You can twist and turn them, pull them in any direction that you want to. So, but watch, as I'm doing this, the weight is coming from the ceiling to the floor. Oof. So the pressure is coming from behind me, and as I go up, the pressure is still behind me, even though mm, I bring it together. So, I'll turn it with a fly, the pressure is coming from behind me, from the floor to the ceiling, and as I come up, it doesn't change. I still have no lateral resistance coming together. So, I can go down, I can come up, I can rotate, and I can squeeze all the way through, but I have no lateral resistance. I have to go all the way up and try to force lateral resistance, but I really can't feel that as much. The important thing is to get that lateral resistance if I want to build the inside of my chest to maximize building the inside of my chest. I can build it just because of going through a range of motion, but if I want to maximize it, I need that lateral resistance. And you'll see that in just a moment when I demonstrate the Iron Chest Master. Okay, I talked about the Iron Chest Master and I think it's really in Important that I explain this to you. Um, one thing with the dumbbell presses, 
As I showed you before, the dumbbell presses and the bench press, all of the pressure is from behind you. Never lateral movement, never lateral resistance. Even though you bring the weights in, still because of gravity, all of the pressure or resistance comes from behind you, pushing downward. Now, as you notice with the Iron Chest Master, there are resistance bands on each side. So when I pull in, when I pull in, there's lateral resistance. And we also, we often equate this to a bird in flight. When a bird is flying, he gets the resistance of the wind, and right here, there's still lateral resistance. He goes against the wind, and he finishes the development of his chest. The leanest muscle group on a bird and the largest muscle group on a bird is his chest and he flies with resistance all the way through. And so that's what we've developed here. So your question, Tom, is how can I develop the inner chest? Watch this. First, <clears throat> I have the bench pressing movement. Then, oh, I've got the lateral movement. Bench press. Lateral. If you'll watch the humerus, you'll watch this humerus move in the same motion as a bird in flight. I'm gonna do five reps. <clears throat> I think that was close to five reps. But the idea is to get a full range of motion, working the chest from the very outside, building the width and the thickness, but also bringing it all the way in so you're working the inner pectoral also. With working the chest, I want to conclude with this, that if you're working your chest and you want to get that peak contraction, it is required at the very end of that repetition to squeeze and to contract. With certain movements, you have to do an isometric even to get that contraction. If you're using the dumbbells and you're pushing, you come all the way through, it's your isometric that squeezes because you don't have the lateral resistance. With cable crossovers, same way. As you pull from behind you, you get here. Most of the time, if you're honest, if the weight is too heavy for you, your arms are bent and you just bring them in right here to finish off that repetition. But the real key is to make sure you get a peak contraction and that you have lateral resistance, otherwise you're doing it isometric. What is the isometric good for? In competition, I used isometrics a lot. Six months out from a competition, I would do uh, lots of flexing, but three months prior to competition, I would actually do a whole workout session of flexing and contracting. Why? Because it brings out the definition, but it won't bring out the muscle thickness and size that a lot of us are looking for. So the isometric is a nice thing to do, but it's not gonna give you the mass that you're looking for. You need that lateral resistance and you need weight. The muscle size and the muscle strength are closely related. If you can get that muscle to be stronger, you can cause that muscle to grow. The growth process is this. You micro tear the tissue, it repairs according to the stress you placed on it, you rest, you feed it, you recover, and you do it again. And it tears and it grows. It tears and it grows. That's how it's supposed to work. Whenever you sprain an ankle, all of the blood rushes to that area to heal and repair it. Well, with building muscles the same way. You get a pump, those muscles are huge and they go down. When they go down, they're not just going down, they're repairing and they're building. Until next time.